Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Limbs Reptiles, and today I've got the keys to the kingdom. Uh, the kingdom of rattlesnakes here at our house anyway. So what we're going to do today is we're going to have a rattlesnake feeding video. So I want to warn you, we're going to be feeding a live little fuzzy cute animal, uh, at least some people think they're cute, to a live rattlesnake that I think is cute. If you don't want to see that happen, don't watch, okay? Don't yell at me in the comments, don't do that crap, I'm telling you, we're going to do it don't watch if you do want to watch then cool welcome to the channel what we're going to talk about today is we're going to feed this rattlesnake now it hasn't eaten in a week we did skip its meal last week because i went through and we had spring cleaning we reset all of our cages brand new litters some new decorations fresh clean water dish fresh clean everything so it should be pretty hungry uh that's why we're doing it now everything looks good in there this is a hyper melanistic western diamondback so what that means is this is a diamondback like a western diamondback rattlesnake there are two a western and an eastern this is a western you can tell that by the ring tail. It's a kind of a dead giveaway on that. Uh, it produces too much melanin. Well, not too much. That's what the morph causes. So you get this almost black rattlesnake with some pattern as the pattern changes down its tail, uh, which is really cool. This is one of my favorite morphs in Western. I wanted one of these for a long time, and then I had a chance to acquire one, and I jumped at it from a very good friend of mine. Um, probably, I probably think of him as more of a friend of mine than he does me of his. <laughs> Reason being is it's, it's a guy that... Uh, I didn't talk to him before doing this, so I'm not going to name drop him. I don't like doing that talk to people first. But it's a guy that I have a lot of admiration for in the hobby that has done so much with venomous and large snakes and things that nobody knows about. That uh, he's, he's awesome. So to get an animal from him was a big, big deal for me. So without any further ado, let's feed this thing. Of course, this is locked. So first thing is remove the lock. Next, we're going to pick a meal. Now these run a hemotoxic venom, so it's going to affect blood more than anything else. Blood and tissue, it will cause necrosis of the tissue. And it's that quick. Now, that is the kind of rattlesnake feed I like to see. Somebody's going to get on here and comment and say, oh, it died that quick because it probably punctured the heart. It did not puncture the heart. Their fangs are not so long that it's going to go through and puncture the heart. What has happened is this snake has put a buttload of venom in that rat. And it probably put it in a very, very bad spot for that rat. And it's just overloading everything pretty, pretty quick. Uh, and now we're just doing the death twitches. That thing is not going to get up. Uh, <laughs> now, could it have gone straight into a vein or something like that? Sure, that is a possibility when you see something this quick happen. But the idea of a fang that's only this long, puncturing the heart from a bite in the side... I highly doubt it. It would have to just magically go through a bunch of ribs and get right in there, and it's just not very likely. But whenever I, the one bad thing about keeping hots, guys, and some of them will put a lot of venom in and eat very fast. The snake tends to do that. Some of them will do a little bit of venom and take forever. I hate seeing that it takes longer. This live feeding, that rat, other than the twitching, I mean, it was gone quicker than it would have been on a constrictor. That's pretty awesome. So that is the kind of rattlesnake feeding I like to see. Quick, efficient, not a lot of suffering. And then we'll see if this thing will come and eat for us right in front of us. Uh, beautiful, beautiful example of a snake. Great personality. This one is a little bit flighty when I work with it. It is one that will try to run off of a hook on you. Uh, but otherwise, pretty well-behaved little snake. Kurt, any questions about this one? Um, so are there multiple morphs of diamondback? Uh, yeah, I kind of like to say the Western Diamondback is kind of like the ball python of the venomous world. And the fact that it has so many morphs. And I think there's a lot of morphs out there that haven't even been discovered yet or worked with because the market is so small. It's not a lot of people buying these or keeping these. So, you know, it's not like a ball python. But things that I can think of off the top of my head, and I know I'm going to miss some, we've seen patternless rattlesnakes. We've seen uh, albino, lavender albino, caramel albino, which is a T-positive albino. Uh, we've seen hypermelanistic. We have seen uh, scaleless. Uh, we have seen, oh man, there is at least one that we have that's wild caught that appears to be hypomelanistic, which is really cool. Hasn't been proven genetic yet that I know of. Maybe have somewhere else. And then we have some that are a very red color that we hope to prove to be genetic, uh, but it's possible to line breeding. We'll show you one of those in a future video that we're going to feed because she's grown up from a little girl to a big bad girl who is ready for breeding. So, there are a lot of morphs out there. Uh, pied? There actually is a pied. Now, since you kind of hit me up without letting me do my research, which is awesome. I actually really like when you do that. It kind of tests me a little bit. 
I will tell you there are pied rattlesnakes, but I can't remember if there's been a pied western. I want to say the uh, last pied, I think the pied was a western. There's also been leucistic. I know there's been a leucistic timber out there, but I, I do think they have had pied westerns in the past. And then there are really cool combos like the purple haze, which is a hypermelanistic caramel albino, I believe. So there's all kinds of just really, really cool things out there uh, that just, they're awesome. Um, one thing is, all the morphs that I can think of in Western Diamondback have been recessive. So unlike ball pythons, where you have a lot of incomplete dominance really to reproduce, you're dealing with recessive morphs. So a lot of things in captivity are going to be hetched for this or hetched for that. Uh, you may not know. And then on top of that, it takes a little bit longer to produce them. It also means you're less likely to find them in a wild, but you may pop something in a, like a, oh, if you have a, a colony you're breeding, you know, several males and you're moving your males to different females, you may pop something out that you didn't expect because of the hets that are out there. But really neat. And of course, then they just swallow like any other snake, you know, head first and work it down. These things can handle pretty big meals. We do tend to feed ours quite frequently, but they can survive on very minimal food and actually very minimal water. They are, Western Diamondback covers a huge amount of range and, and a huge amount of temperature swing. I mean, all the way up in very northern Oklahoma into just possibly the slightest parts of Kansas even. Uh, there's a, a population that survives around Lake Canopolis in Kansas that was introduced, so they're able to survive there you know, all the way down into Mexico, right? So there's this huge different range in temperatures that they can handle and terrains they can handle, making them one of the most adaptable rattlesnakes out there. A lot of us is very small territories, not these guys. They, they kick ass, man. They're just, they are just awesome. Very awesome snakes. Anything else, Kurt? No. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We're going to hop up off of here and uh, do some more feeding videos while we're at it. We'll catch you next time.